Episode of IMO five minutes not is not do is not uh, in depth. What happens if periodically because these are insta vlog notes and insta vlog notes as I said before are the workings uh, of going from ad hoc notes to more organized notes. So one thing that has one thing that one of the things that has to be done and this is what we're going to do today. Is today's going to be a day of organization where we reorganize our notes because we are getting something that's larger, so that means we have to uh, get things more organized. And this is our first, the way we first do this thing. And the way I'm doing this first here is that this is our initial note taking. So this is where we do a lot of the initial notes here, uh, and I do a lot of uh, notes on here. And what will happen next is that um, from these notes, these notes will then be put into the main system onto a new wiki system that's will be active on Friday. So I'm in Insta Vlogs because I said uh, uh, you get a bit of a problem here. File Explorer just crashed on me, so that's uh, one thing. So let's see what we can do here. Ah, here we go. It looks like we're back in business. So I want to go over to where I actually have everything. And let's see, I'm in Notes, Video Studio, Insta Vlogs. Now, InstaVlogs, I don't have it organized in any in any particular thing, so uh, they're right now they're just kind of ad hoc notes. There's nothing really organized in here, and so I'm gonna actually organize this better. So I want to create a directory called IMO because this is where we're gonna put everything. So let me create that directory. And I have a, uh, uh, a note sort of for today, but I'm going to open it and then resave it again inside the directory. And this will sort of give us an idea of where we're going to sort of take things uh, <laughs> uh, uh, from here. Okay, so I'm going to save this as, because I want to bring this into the new directory. And save it in the IMO directory. Keep it the same name. So this is actually where we're working. But now I want to take some of the topics that we have in here and actually create uh, uh, separate note systems for them. I want to put. I don't want to have everything in one system. So I want to organize things. I don't want to have everything in one file. So. Okay, let's copy this. I, I, I'm doing the uh, I am I am slut shaming. That's gonna have its own particular uh, file. That's gonna be the main one.
Okay, I'm creating a new f new file, and this is f specifically for the slut shaming here. And I'm just looking to reference right now the uh, I am the IMO uh, video. And I don't have the actual video in front of me, so I'm just going to sort of leave a space for it. And now I'm going to uh, name the save the file. And this is kind of how you you know you, you you start to organize things. You start to look at uh, the variety of different ways you can you know you can organize things, and so that uh, you have better options. And I'm damn going to have to go in here and sort of reorganize some how how I've got things here because as a director becomes larger, as this becomes more um, then you do need to uh, you know to look at things more. So uh, I'm gonna go back to one of the other files. I'm gonna go back to the main file now. And sort of doing text because we're sort of reorganizing everything. is uh, morality in a pluralistic world, so that's going to get its own file, and that's where we'll deal with some of the other issues in there as well. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the topics that are in here that I, that I talk about, that we've been talking about so far, and I'm giving them their own their own file so that uh, we can uh, start talking about this more. You know, we can get more content in here. So that's done. So now let's save this file. And right now we do have to go through a number of directories to get to where we want to get to. Uh, but eventually, it's not going to be that bad. Basically, what we're doing is we're trying to reorganize everything uh, more or in the pluralistic world. And one of the things I thought about uh, last night, uh, and this is what happens sometimes you do think about uh, what you had done earlier. And uh, in the middle of the night, we realized that as we we're talking about uh, uh, the whole issue that we're covering a, a good area of psychology. But what happens is, is that there's a variety of different types of psychology. There's, uh, you know, psychology isn't one thing. Oops. It's a variety of things. And so one of the things we have to look at, and right now I'm just doing, because this is kind of the way it ended up, creating a new file and this is going to be now for um, for sex abuse this is our sex abuse file
I made a mistake with that. So. Oh. As I said, there's a variety of different standards of things, and it's just <laughs> made a mistake on that. This is something that you, and when, you, when you're focusing on things, sometimes you don't focus the right way. Let's go back to the main file there. And we're where we need to be. So let's copy and paste this now. The one I'm going to create a topic on is textbook psychology. And this is what I was talking about before. And this is what I was sort of thinking about last night. That there's a variety of different ways, a variety of different types of psychology. And what happens is, is that there's your standard view of psychology that you get mostly from schools, mostly from professors and stuff like that. Uh, that are considered to be, well, let's put it this way, they're considered to be what we call standard. And that's what was called this textbook psychology, is that much of what we come in contact with in the world is stated, we we'll call stated truth. Stated truth is not necessarily truth, but rather something that an authority feels is the truth at a particular point in time. And when I say this at a particular point in time, at a particular point in time, it says it's a qualifier that uh, truth does not always stay the same. And this is this is true for psychology. Psychology um, has changed throughout history, throughout time, and has given us a wide variety of views on how society behaves and how society is supposed to behave. The problem is is that every time a new view pops up, it insists that the old view is completely incorrect and that you know that we have to sort of get rid of uh, everything else and this is really not that good uh, because you do need to look at everything in, in, in its own particular space in its own particular light and bring us to a point where we can have a comparison. I remember I said before, this is we're talking about the um, using the uh, situation in Calcutta to look at what happens when you have alternative morals, alternative uh, understandings of psychology. And you have that pluralistic view within India. So we can use India as a very good model for what will happen if you have this particular this particular plurality, and as you look at this particular plurality, and this is what we'll be we're getting getting into this further, we'll be sort of uh, adding more notes to this. Uh, we will looking into, into going into India. We'll be looking at different things in there, in different aspects of Indian culture, uh, to understand how uh, this whole pluralistic view applies and what the consequences are going to be and what we are seeing as consequences in North American or called Western society, what we call modern society. So there's two different views, two different societies. Modern society and then uh, what we call alternative societies. Uh, modern society is North America. Mm. Europe primarily. And then you have Outside of that, what we'll call alternative societies, where the predominant view is not necessarily European. They do interact with European ideas, but they're not primarily European. And this is where we run into a number of issues where we do have to take a deeper look at things and then we can sort of bring things back to uh, a more... Uh, interconnected understanding, if you will. 
So, uh, we're going to come back in a few minutes. Uh, I just got to arrange things a little bit better in here. And I'll to let you know how we've arranged things. And uh, so that way we have our sort of, this is kind of our organization day. <laughs> All right, see you in a few seconds. <laughs> Be prepared to have what you know challenged by Cyborg Alpha TV Network. Hello everybody, welcome back to the IMO Vlog. This is the second segment of the IMO Vlog. It's been a couple of days since we've started this, so I do have to give a time and date stamp. And... For those of you who don't know, or uh, a time and date stamp is part of a log. In, in any scientific journal, you always give a time and date stamp. Uh, if you watch Star Trek at all, you'll know what a star, you know, if you hear them talk about star date so-and-so as they're reading into the log. Well, that's kind of what this is here, because this is a journal, this is, this is notes. And the time and date where the note has been made is important so it is 11 hours and 18 minutes into the day of thursday june 5th uh 2014 and we began this uh imo vlog i believe on the 31st i've got to go check my notes for this assuming we last do the last did this and I've moved everything around. I really did move things around a lot because... Uh, and this is what sort of caused the problem, if you will. It's not always easy to sort of organize your notes because there's a variety of different ways of organizing things. And let's see, we left off... I think we left off on June 2nd. June 2nd was our last... Uh, yeah, June second was our last uh, our last uh, segment. So we started this uh, the segment. We started the segment on June second. It's now June fifth. Uh, <laughs> so let me just sort of make note of this is now June fifth here rather than June second. And that happens. So there, there, you'll start something. You'll start working on a note for for a bit. Something will sort of catch your eye, and then when you go to resolve that particular problem, it takes you longer than expected. So there is a break in between. And so this segment, the break in between the segment here has been. Let's see if we did this on the second, uh, the third, fourth, and now we're on the fifth. So it's taken us two days to resolve a particular problem. And the problem was is how to organize InstaVlogs, or, or more particularly, how to organize uh, the IMO. And, and the thing is, when you're thinking about IMO, it's part of the InstaVlog, so I'm now calling it the IMO Vlog. It is one of the vlogs within the InstaVlogs. Now, it's also going to have, and this is what I was going through this, because we're talking about textbook psychology, it crosses over into two areas. Psychology is a Greek word, uh, uh, term psychologia. Psycho it comes from the psychi. Psychi means soul or spirit. Uh, Ologia means word or study. And because we're studying the soul, we're studying the, the spirit, it comes into two particular areas. It goes into the, the, the uh, Bass vlog. That's the Byzantine Antiquity Studies vlog. Because it goes into, uh, it goes all the way back into ancient times. You could trace the history of the uh, soul all the way back into early man. And you can see how it plays out in various different societies uh, when you look at anthropology. So you can do that as well. And this is sort of what we were doing. We were looking at uh, slut shaming. We went into India. We wanted, to, we wanted to get outside of the Christian realm and look at a realm that was not Christian and see whether or not a certain behavior had a common result across all cultures. And so we went into a, and the thing is, this is about India, what you need to realize is that India isn't one culture. When you have polytheism or, or, or like, some like Hinduism, which has many gods, each god has its own culture 
each ha god has its own customs and so you're in an environment where you have a, a it will call a a generally pluralistic society uh that where a lot of cultures exist in one specific area and you can use this particularly if is particularly if christianity is not the main or the dominant uh culture in other words it's just part of the overall setting you can use this to sort of take a look and see okay well this is not a particularly christian society christian is not the dominant uh form what do we have here as a result where is our result what do we see in this, this society in this society in terms of a culture what do you see as as the end result of their uh called cultural norms or their cultural morality and morality does often stem from from culture because culture itself stems from theology that's through the understanding of god and that gives you your right and wrong and the question is, and, well, that way the question, and this is where you get textbook psychology, this is where you get talk about uh, uh, many of these called textbook anthropologists. And these are the ones that come out of the universities, talk about, and they talk about uh, multiple truths that just because you think something is right doesn't necessarily mean somebody else thinks something is right as well. In other words, your right is not always somebody else's right. And this is what they talk about, the, the, the pluralistic societies. And the argument is that everything is conceptual. And because everything is conceptual, that you cannot say, state when something is right and when something is wrong. And this goes back to the whole thing that uh, the geeky blonde was talking about, about, uh, about her feelings on sexual abuse. If you're part of the culture that says we're pluralistic, that you can't say right and wrong, then when something happens to you that's bad, you can't say that it's wrong because you're not you're part of a pluralistic society. There's no right, no wrong. It's all concept. If you're in a conceptual society, then there is no right and wrong. It's only when you step out of the, the, the conceptual society and place a stake in a particular society or a particular culture that you can now say something is right or, right or wrong. But the, what we're looking at here, and this is what we're going to say, we're going to go beyond the textbook. We're going to go outside of the standard outside of the norm and look and see whether or not things go beyond that and the way to do that is, is that going to India where you have a, a lot of different cultures a lot of different rights and wrongs and what's the end result what what are the what's the end result in the, sort of the living conditions there how do people live what's their what's their living standard like what's it like to live in that particular environment here and the thing is, anything that is detrimental to yourself physically, that hurts somebody individually, I could say something wrong that's negative. And that's how I view it. I view it as something, you know, let's, let's take a look at first at the physical point of view. Are you hurting somebody physically? And if you are, then that's something that's wrong. That's hard to define. Now, other people may say, well, okay, well, no. And they'll have, they'll have the reasons for it. But from my perspective, you know, because I don't want to stay alive, and I don't want to let someone else to kill me, what what ha or hurt me. So this standard is it should be applied as okay. Can you see something detrimental to somebody else that's happening in their society because of these different uh, we'll call truths? If you can see that, and it's and this result is standard across all these multiple different truths. Then it doesn't matter what the truths say; it's the end result that matters, and that's how you sort of go past the what we call our conceptual view or, or, or our perception of life into the realities of life. And this is what I'm saying: we're going to have to really deal with some very complex things here because uh, people there tend to be two extremes. People say, "Oh, everything is is is, is conceptual; that there's not no reality. Everything is by perception." And that's one group over here, particularly on the left. Then the right side will take, uh, uh, and, and these are people typically on the right, whoever, the, the, they're the pragmatics, the, the, or they're called the pragmatists. The pragmatists see things in terms of reality, or what they call reality. That there are hard and fast rules, that you cannot break these rules of reality, and this is the way things are. And they'll come up with laws. They're the ones who are law and order. If you hear someone talking about, Law and order. We have to live by law and order. We respect things by law and order. Right? And law and order is their final line. You're looking at a person who's on the right. 
this is a right sec, a right sector or a right a right wing person. They're right wing. A person who is uh, open liberal uh, views everything as a concept. Everything is okay. This includes drug addiction. This includes uh, sexuality. Everything is good. There's nothing that's wrong because everything is a concept. They're on the left. So this, this this is your dichotomy that you have in society. You can see this. You can see this playing out in politics. You have left and right. But the thing is, both can be wrong at the same time. You can, you can have two people arguing over a subject, and both will be wrong. You know, maybe say, oh, well, you know, you know, this person over there, you know, and you hear the person arguing, and and you have two, two, two sides of their argument. You know this person over on the left here is wrong about their argument. I mean, you see that, that they're wrong about the argument. You say, well, that, must, that person on the right there must be right. Well, no, not necessarily. Because what happens is that in many cases, you argue with what you know. And if the information that determines whether you're right or not is outside of what you know in cases, and in many cases, it's outside of both what both sides knows, it's outside their experience, then they're not going to see this other thing that will affect the truth, what the, what the reality is. And the thing is, is that, again, this is where we have to talk about the difference between truth and reality. Uh, there is a conceptual truth, there is a perceptual truth, and there's the reality truth. There's three different types of truths. Conceptual and perceptual truths are things that we determine ourselves. They're subjective. A uh, the truth that sits outside of this, known as the objective truth, sits independent of the of the person. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your con your concept. It has nothing to do with your perception. It exists simply because it exists, and has nothing to do with you. This is the whole question: If a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Well, this is the argument of a conceptualist or a perceptionist. A perceptionist and a conceptualist will say that the, everything in the world is, is subjective because we only perceive and, and conceive things. Things are, in other words, only within our mind. So therefore, the tree doesn't make a sound when it falls in the forest if no one's around to hear it. However, there is an existence outside of us that has nothing to do with us. And because of this existence outside of us, this objective existence, it doesn't matter whether we hear or see it at all. It doesn't matter who's around. It just that it, it, it makes a sound because there is a physics, there is there is a mechanism that makes a sound. And this goes into the uh, it goes into physics. And again, you go into two different rooms, rooms of physics. You can go to, into a conceptual and in, in, into a perceptual physics, where things are determined by the mind, or you can go into and then this is something known as theoretical physics. Theoretical physics is determined by the mind, is determined by theory. Then there is a route called experimental physics, where the physics and the understanding of physics is done by experience, is done by experimentation. And this kind of leads you into a whole new understanding of things, that, that there are things outside of you that exist that you your mind has no control over. You're simply an observer. It, and I think it, the, uh, the objective physicist, the experimentalist, uh, is no longer an expert. He's simply an observer. And this is kind of one of the things that en ends up happening. And, and so this, we can go back to this whole thing on you know sexual abuse. We can go back to the whole position of the geeky blonde in terms of her experience with sexual abuse. Uh, and, and, and we can show how that conceptual uh, positions, positions within society that you think are normal, can wind up contradicting what you believe in terms of what you experience. And so we'll take a look at this as well in the IMO vlogs. You know, we're going to go from slut shaming into all of this here, into the dynamics of what goes on. I said we're going far beyond the textbook. Because the textbooks, and this is what textbooks do. Textbooks, and particularly in today's society, are the ways society imposes authority. And it says, in this textbook here, this is what's true. Anything that's outside this textbook is wrong. And that's not really true. It's not true that 
only what's within the textbook is, is, is real or, or true. There is more beyond the textbook. But the thing is, most people don't go beyond the textbook. Most people, and particularly, I would say, girls, work to the textbook. They're, you know, they are geared to the textbook. And so what happens, your notes, going from, uh, from the ad hoc notes to the more organized notes, uh, is extremely important because uh, it determines how your experimentation works and it's the record of your observation. So, anyways, uh, we're coming to the, we're near the end of our time now, uh, because I do have to do other things, uh, you have to do this on a schedule, because there's so much to do here that's just unbelievable, so we are going to be coming back on a more frequent basis, and you'll be seeing more of this, and we will go further in as the notes are developed, and you'll see how the notes are developed, we'll see uh, how we deal with more and more of the detail. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. I will see you in the next list of vlogs, uh, the, particularly the IMO vlog. Uh, I'm going to do the IMO vlogs right now. I'm scheduling them for almost every other day because uh, there is a lot of material that we have to get through. I have to go through now and sort out different material here. And once that's done, then I'll come back and do the next uh, IMO vlog and we'll continue on with our discussion. All right. Take it easy. Democratic Earth. Earth.